What's up, y'all? So um, I want to talk to y'all about my wholesale, my real estate wholesale journey so far. Um, you know, I started off a bit slow because I was working on multiple, you know, projects at a time. But now, uh, over the past three months, uh, four months, I've been, you know, really full time focused on real estate wholesaling. And um, I've had some pretty decent success pretty decent success i've pivoted a couple of times because i'm really in a place where or was in a place where i was really testing and i'm still testing to be completely honest um but i was testing to see which type of marketing channel um i really wanted to focus on um as well as um you know how i wanted to structure you know my company in total because i am in this to actually create something that actually scales uh, so you may not know, you know, uh, much about me or whatever the case is, but just a little tab tidbit about, you know, why I'm here. Um, made some money in crypto, whatnot, of course. Um, you know, lost a significant amount, to say the least. And now I'm, you know, I'm out for not vengeance, but I got to get my lick back. Because I still believe in Bitcoin heavily. I still believe in Ethereum. I still believe in uh, what blockchain technology represents. But in order for me to play in that game, I got to have a consistent source of income. So all throughout my history, I've been I've never had a job, never had a job. Even when I try to apply for a job, highly intelligent guy, super capable. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I could never get a job, you know, so I, I learned that pretty early on and I just thought. I just stopped trying after a while because it, it never worked out for me. <clears throat> so I've always had different, you know, side hustles or business ideas um, that I was, you know, pursuing. And um, over the course of that journey, for whatever reason, whenever I make money in the past, it was always like lump sums. It was always lump sums. And, uh, and I'll get into how that happened. Um, in another video, but I've always made money in lump sums, and throughout that, it honestly messed up my money management skills, because oftentimes I will go from, you know, having very little to a whole lot, and then, you know, just those dynamics, you know, it just doesn't breed very good spending habits, doesn't breed uh, good money management skills, so that's been a, a, a journey that I've been dealing with for uh, a while now. And um, I've been getting better, but you know, there's still trials and, and, and whatnot naturally. I'm, I'm human too. Well, <clears throat> the, the thing is, I'm looking to change how I make money. I no longer want to make lump sums of money, you know, here and there. My goal is now to create a cash machine, something that can consistently spit out cash no matter what. And, you know, I was previously operating in the crypto space, which is obviously super volatile, super risky, um, very lucrative if you can get it right, but can be detrimental if you get it wrong, right? So I decided to go into an industry, real estate, um, that was much more stable, much more predictable. Um, you know, real estate is one of the oldest industries on the planet. So that's what brought me to real estate and wholesaling specifically because you can essentially have a marketing budget. And if you understand sales, you can, you know, pretty much create consistent income because as a wholesaler, you're basically, you know, finding inventory and moving inventory. You're basically moving inventory from one place to another. Um, you know, so you're taking inventory from, you know, uh, someone who wants to move or sell their house fast for whatever reason, whether it's an inherited property, it's the divorce, it's a house, then they're, they're tired of being a landlord, whatever the case is, and now we're moving it to someone else who actually does have a need for that house. Maybe they like to be a landlord. Maybe, you know, they want to take this old house and 
you know, fix it up, make it look brand new and um, flip it for a profit. Whatever it is, we're just moving inventory. That's all we are doing as wholesalers. So most of the, what we do is marketing and sales. So I figured there's tons of properties in America. And um, if I got really good at, you know, negotiating with people who had the inventory, I could provide that inventory um, on a consistent basis, which would then create consistent income, which would then solve my problem. And I could invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum and, you know, other businesses as much as I want, you know, if I just dedicate a couple years to building out this company. So that's what this journey for me is all about right now, just building this company out. You know, even as I make this video, I don't even know if I'm going to post this video, to be honest. I'm just really just talking off the head, just giving you guys you know, an update on, you know, what I've been doing. So um, initially, you know, I started off by doing SMS text messaging, you know, so I went and got a bunch of records of people who own property and, you know, had a different mailing address, which is called absentee owners. And the reason why I focused on those, aside from, <laughs> Um, you know, just just know, just being hearing all the gurus and having your buddies tell you, hey, focus on absentee owners. Aside from that, um, the reason why, the main reason why I focus on those folks, um, is because is because they're less emotionally attached to the to the properties. Typically, you know, if someone owns multiple properties or it's a second property to them or you know they're it's used for something else they're more likely to sell it because it's not typically something that has a huge amount of sentimental value and we can often you know buy that property at a nice discount and aside from that it's easier to find those properties um you know in a vacant status you know because anytime you gotta you know, deal with you know, wholesaling a property and someone is still living in there it's typically going to, you know, complicate the transaction just a little bit. You know, it's not something that you can't do. It's not something that doesn't happen a lot. But the low hanging fruit is typically those those vacant properties, you know, um, owned by people who, you know, ha who have multiple properties or whatnot. So I focused on those in the beginning and I was sending a lot of text messages. I was sending a lot of text messages. Let me see if I can turn the light on here. I was sending a lot of text messages and um, and I ended up getting one, two, three, four. I ended up getting about four contracts within 30 days, lost three of them, <laughs> lost three of those contracts, kept one, you know, and there's different reasons I'll go into why I lost the, other, the three contracts, but it's just growing pain. It was just growing pain. Just me not understanding how to you know have a structured sales call not having confidence and in, in my ability to move certain properties in certain areas or it was something on the seller side that just made the property you know um unable to be sold at that time so the one property that i did maintain a good contract for and did negotiate a good price with um, it ended up being a little more complicated. I had to go and find some uh, some heirs to the person who was deceased, who you know previously owned the property. Had to get them to sign quick claim deeds, send that to the attorney. Um, but we ended up closing it in about 35, maybe 35, 40 days, and I made about thirty three thousand dollars on that. When I did the math and I calculated what it cost me to get that deal done, it was about thirty. $300, you know, and I spent that on, I spent $1,500 um, on a list. Well, skip tracing a list, that list of absentee owners I just told you guys about. I spent another seven, 700 some bucks on the text messaging software. Then I had to get a CRM and I had to get a couple other tools or whatever. But long story short, I spent about $3,300 um, total to get this deal done and I made $33,000. So my profit was about $30,000. I used that money to funnel back into marketing and start getting more deals. And then <laughs> lo and behold, just when I'm thinking I'm getting, um, you know, some really good traction going, uh, you know, we get some, the software that I was using along with all the other software, 
for texting got hit with some type of um, update in the federal regulation for you know text messaging so all a half the text message so the the text message delivery rate dropped significantly it became more difficult to text um, we had to change our messaging around and it became a hassle for a lot of people and we just kind of lost faith in it so I was one of the guys who just said you know what I'm just not going I'm not going to text at least not right now um, and then I started doing more research and I figured out about another lead source called pay per lead, which is basically, you know, folks who are running Google pay per click ad campaigns. And instead of them taking on the deals themselves, they just sell the leads, sell the leads for people who have already raised their hand. So I said, okay, that seems to be a faster route. I don't have to have a marketing department. I can simply just buy these leads and wait for people to reach out to me. And then, you know, I will you know, have a, a cleaner operation, a more straightforward operation. And it worked. You know, I paid for some leads and, you know, I started getting text messages of the name, the address, the phone number, um, and a reason that they wanted to sell to us. And at this point, I still didn't have a sales script or anything like that. And, um, but I was able to, you know, secure a few more contracts. You know, so I closed a couple deals um, off of pay per lead. And then, you know, and I'm just walking you guys through, you know, the transitions that are happening and like the real life, you know, issues that you that you come across, um, you know, wholesaling. You know, all of the houses, you know, are not great. And especially being so far from the property, you got to get really good at at comping these properties comping basically meaning pricing the property compared to what other properties in the area are selling for um and also accounting for you know the renovations that somebody would have to do to either move into that house you know as a as a as a as a living person or you know fix up the house to fix and flip or maybe fix up the house just enough to have a tenant live in the house or whatever you got to get really good at estimating those numbers so i'm pretty good with numbers so it doesn't hurt me too much um and i've always been pretty good with estimating it's kind of like a like a gift of mine and that's that's one of the issues that i'm having as far as how do i train somebody on that particular piece when a lot of it is like like intuition with me like when i see numbers i'm able to just kind of say okay like i don't know i don't need, i can't even explain it just it just happens right and my numbers are typically pretty accurate um, so, and, and I have a couple guidelines that can help folks for sure. Um, but long story short, um, you know, one thing that I did not account for was one thing that I did not account for was the contract fallout rate. So, so, so some of the things that I had to learn was when I started doing, you know, PPL pay per lead, it was different from when I was texting because when I was texting I was focusing on areas that I handpicked counties that I handpicked when I went to PPL pay per lead I was focused on nationwide because I wanted the least expensive I want the cheapest lead cost and what that did was it would bring me a lot of leads in rural areas areas with no activity and this is a prime example of listening to people when they tell you um, what to do based on their experience. So I asked a couple people, you know, if I should go nationwide or if I should pay, pay a premium price for, um, for you know, leads in an area that, you know, I specifically handpicked, which would increase my lead cost by like $80, right? And you need 10 to 15 leads on average in order to get a, a contract. Now, I didn't listen. I went for the cheap leads. And I started getting a lot of leads in rural areas. So the people who wanted to sell were in rural areas. And it was difficult because, again, finding buyers for those, um, you know, is not that easy in a market that doesn't have any activity. And we're wholesalers. Again, we're moving inventory. So if there isn't any inventory being moved, then there's no money to be made for us or it makes it very difficult for us to make money. So I didn't listen. And I had to learn the hard way. So then I ended up switching and paying for leads. But I actually did get a lead from those from the cheap lead source. I actually made my money back. I closed a deal. That deal was about sixteen thousand dollars or whatever. 
Uh, so, so it does work. It's just you really got to pick through the haystack uh, and cross your fingers and hope that you got, you know, you get some good leads. So I don't like to cross my fingers and hope. I like to have a scalable, systematic approach to things. So I ended up, you know, going back to the provider and telling them, hey, I want these areas. The next issue came about <laughs> I used some technology to pick the areas, but I should have researched the areas more because I got a lot of leads from Detroit. Nothing against Detroit, but the real estate market there sucks, at least for what we got going on. The price is too low. You know, houses are selling for too cheap. And as a wholesaler, we're looking for houses that are selling for a decent amount or a certain amount so that we can have something to, you know, collect for ourselves. If it's a $10,000 house, Obviously, it's not too much more that I can add on an assignment fee for that. But if it's a two hundred thousand dollar house, that leaves way more wiggle room. So I had to start excluding certain markets that had a median home price that was too low. Once I fine tuned that, we started getting, you know, better deals, you know, better leads. And then the next problem came. Right. And I'm just being super transparent with you guys. Obviously, like lead generation is not an issue at this point. I know how to generate leads from text messages. I can generate a lot of leads from text messages. Even now, even though the regulation came, I understand now, you know, how to go back, edit the messages to make them compliant, what software to use. Um, It's just managing all of that data and managing a text messenger and managing a lead manager. is just not attractive to me right now. I want to run as slim as an organization um as possible or operation as possible now ppl comes with its own challenges and one of the main challenges with ppl is the type of leads you get traditional wholesale leads or traditional wholesale deals are um traditional wholesale deals are of ugly houses you guys remember that signs that say we buy ugly houses or we buy houses and all that stuff right They're typically looking for ugly houses because folks who they're selling it to want to come in and fix the house up, make it look brand new. People who are coming through PPL, their house, a lot of the times, is in livable condition. It's not run down. It's not beat up. Obviously, some of them need work or whatever. But a lot of the reason why they're coming to us is because, for whatever reason, real estate agents or realtors have left a bad impression on them and they just don't they want to sell quick they want to sell easy and they just don't want to deal with a realtor they want to know exactly what they're going to get you know up front that makes them feel comfortable um and that's why they're reaching out to us that's a that's a big reason why they're reaching out to us that's not the only reason um and with that comes different challenges because those are people who a traditional cash offer will not make sense for because most of the time they're living in the house or a tenant is living in the house and the house is going to be worth significantly more than what that cash offer would be. But in order for an investor to come and close quickly, it has to be a cash offer. And whenever there's a cash offer involved, typically there's going to be a discount. The days where the hedge funds were coming offering 100 percent of value. That's done. We'll probably never see that again right so kudos to y'all who took advantage of that back then but we're back to reality (laughs) and and reality is investors no matter on high of a level they are are not coming in paying 100 percent um for assets all across the board it's just not it's just not happening because they have to make money um so we had to pivot our exit strategy and the exit strategy is basically how we get out of a property are we looking to sell it to a fix and flipper are we looking to um, sell it to someone who's looking to buy and hold and add to their you know, rental portfolio? And now there's a third option, um, which is you know, we sell it to a retail buyer. And that's called innovation. Whereas we're not even looking for an investor to buy this property because it's in decent livable condition. In fact, instead, we're looking to sell it to another family or another person who wants to move into the house and in exchange for a discount compared to the other houses selling in the area, they will buy this house in as is condition. Now, there are some details in that and how we, you know, step in to, you know, make it worth their while on both both sides. But primarily the person who's buying it is buying a house at a discount in an area that they want in exchange for 
you know, having um, a property that is in lived in condition. Um, but what that allowed us to do is monetize more of our leads, because the fact of the matter is out of every 10 leads, one lead or out, out of every, you know, um, yeah, t- out of every 10 leads, one lead might be a good wholesale deal. Out of every 10 leads, four deals might be a good um, deal for retail investors. And out of every 10 leads, 50, you know, of those um, would just not fit for what our business model um, is designed to do. So by including this new exit strategy, we were able to, um, you know, get more contracts. But at the same time, that complicates the business a little bit because now we have to you know involve realtors we got to go and get professional pictures we can't just get regular pictures we have to get professional pictures we have to list these deals on the mls we have to schedule showing times with the the owner or the tenant of the property at that time it just complicates it a little more and if you don't know how to manage those different moving pieces um it can become overwhelming fortunately for us i'm pretty good with systems um, and there's some things that we can outsource to make that process, you know, more easy and easily navigatable. Um, so we're not running into that issue as of yet. Um, but again, it has increased our contracts. So now, you know, we're at a point where we're getting an average of two new contracts per week. Now, I know it sounds good, but now hear me out. This is where, you know, and I'm just going to give you guys the real when you're just getting started. Um, Again, if your systems are not efficient and you are not evaluating deals well and your markets are not fine tuned, mainly the biggest issue is the markets being fine tuned to where you're pulling deals from. If that's the case, you will have a high contract fallout rate. So there was one month when we were still marketing Detroit and certain areas of Pennsylvania um, and, you know, other rural areas or bad areas with high crime rates. And we had about eight contracts one month and i tell you no lie we we lost half of those contracts and upon doing more research i realized that a lot of other people who a lot of other wholesalers were experiencing the same thing um and you know people who are just starting off or who aren't you know well systemized they have a 50 percent fallout rate the people who are good um they have a 30% fallout rate, meaning that they're closing 70% of the contract. So if they get 10 contracts in one month, they're closing 70% of those, which is still really, really good. That's that's amazing. So our goal right now is to get from a 50% contract fallout rate um, to a 30% contract rate. So we're looking to decrease our contract fallout rate by choosing our marketing areas better and having a better system for sales a better sales system so that we can negotiate better pricing that we feel confident that we can move the property at and make a decent uh, profit amount. So that's where we are now. You know, a lot of our deals are those deals that are going to retail investors, retail buyers. I mean, not retail investors, retail buyers um, who are looking for a discounted price in certain areas that they like. And, uh, you know, although we are experiencing different you know, trials and stuff, you can't expect to go into any business or any business model and not expect to get hit with some type of unexpected, you know, adversity from, you know, one form, any, any, some, some type of form or fashion. Right. So, you know, um, I still believe in the model a lot. I've made money on the model. I am still making money on the model. We have a couple properties on the market right now, getting a lot of traction, uh, which makes me feel really good. Um, but one thing that I will tell you about this that I wish somebody told me before is that if you take on this business model, whereas you're now listing the properties on the MLS and your, your, your new customer, your new client is now, you know, retail buyers, you need to have a mindset of how much money is two things. One, I like to calculate well, I make, it makes it easier for me to calculate how much money I'm making or we're making per quarter instead of per month because these deals naturally take longer 
to close because we're putting them on the market and folks are coming with loans. Obviously, dealing with banks is going to slow the process down. So instead of a 30 day traditional wholesale is typically about a 50 to 60 day close. So mentally, you got to be prepared for that. So it makes more sense to say, OK, how much money did we make this quarter? Second thing that really helps that I wish someone would have told me was, hey, be prepared to build your pipeline for 60 to 90 days. Since there's a long close period, you need to mentally be prepared and financially be prepared to build out a pipeline, meaning that once you get to a certain point of collecting deals, so let's say for 60 days, we're just getting contracts. We're getting contracts for 60 days. At the end of that 60 day period, we should start having closings. And if we've had a night, if, if our marketing budget was big enough, we should have closings every week after that because we are now you know, closing deals that are in, we, we've built a pipeline and we are now closing those deals that were in that pipeline um, that we've, that we've put into that pipeline over the past 60 days. And that way, now you have consistent closings every month instead of having a couple of closings and having to wait 60 days or 50 days for those closings or for those, for you to get paid uh, for those closings. But those two those two mental shifts really help you understand the business model better. And I think it sets you apart from the other guys because other people might quit early by not understanding that. But from what I've noticed from the guys who are making half a million a month, a million a month, uh, they create a pipeline and they're happy with that pipeline. And their, 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 their goal is to fill that pipeline as much as possible so that they have consistent closings every week and eventually every day you know right now we're just trying to get to a point where you know we got consistent closings every every month you know our goal this first quarter is to uh get to a place where our pipeline has a quarter million dollars uh, worth of inventory or worth of assignment fees per month in the next quarter we want to increase that to you know a half a million a month so our goal is to really build a half a million dollar a month wholesale business and when you do the math based on an average assignment fee of $25,000, you know, we really only need about um, 20 to 25 solid contracts. So that means if we have a 70 percent, you know, hit rate, we really need about 30 to 35 contracts signed uh, per month in order to keep that up. And, you know, if we have enough, le we have as long as you have the budget is very, very, very achievable because people are always looking to buy and sell houses. Um, you just got to have the budget realistically and the team to manage those um, those transactions. But overall, man, I'm really happy with the journey. Um, and, you know, next time I give you guys like a, just a raw update like this, <laughs> I'll probably have some better lighting right now. It, I'm in my parking garage and it's dark. And um, I didn't want to stop the video by getting on the elevator. But now that I think about it, I'm not on live. I'm actually just recording on my phone. I probably could have gone on the elevator because this is not Wi-Fi. So my apologies that this thing is dark. But um, I hope you guys got some value out of that. If you have any questions about starting your own wholesale business, um, or any issues, experiencing any issues in your wholesale business, you know, reach out to me, man. Let me know. A lot of people help me. Um, a lot of people help me. So, you know, each one, teach one. You guys, if you guys are serious and you want to know any questions or whatever, shit, ask me, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm an open book. Um, looking to be as transparent as possible as I get to the point of eventually opening, you know, a physical office, um, and, you know, growing my sales team, growing our operation to half a million a month. So if that's a journey that you're interested in following, being a part of, or maybe starting for yourself, tap in, you know, hit the subscribe button, wherever this video ends up at follow, subscribe, whatever the case is, just do it. And, uh, you, you won't be disappointed if you know me or, you know, if you probably don't know me, but one thing about me, when I, when I set out to do something, I do it, you know, I, I can't say how long it'll take, but when I set out to do it, I do it. And when I lock in, I lock in. And like I said before, I'm used to making lump sums of money, a lot of money. You know, I might not make a lump sum. Well, this these are like chunks of money. Our average deal size is like 25K. Um, but if I, if I say I'm going to make, you know, a certain amount of money, you better believe it's about to happen. So stay tuned.
Peace out.